everyone. My name is Irene, and I work at a place called the Creative Lab, a team inside of Google. And uh, we, some of us are interested in creating what we call experiments uh, to showcase and make more accessible some of the machine learning research that's coming out of Google. And a lot of our work goes to this site called the Experiments with Google site. Now, before I talk about some of the projects on the site, let me just say that we're really inspired by pioneering AI researcher Seymour Papert, who wrote a lot about learning theories in humans, and essentially kind of how to make learning not suck. So this is one of his great quotes. Um, Every maker of video games knows something that the makers of curriculum don't seem to understand. You'll never see a video game being advertised as being easy. Kids who do not like school will tell you it's not because it's too hard, it's because it's boring, right? So if there are some parents in the room, you might be agreeing with this statement. Um, so we're, I'll show you some projects that were inspired by this thinking that uh, learning should be engaging, made in collaboration with the TensorFlow.js team and many other research teams at Google. So this is the first one. Uh, it's called Teachable Machine, and essentially it's a Canon classifier that runs entirely in the browser, and it lets you train three classes of images that trigger different kinds of inputs, like GIFs and sound. So I don't have time to demo it, but I'll show you what happens after you train a model with the tool. So can I get the video? see it uh, choosing between two classes. So um, yeah, so hopefully you get how it works. Um, uh, Alex Chen, the creator, he trained a class to uh, recognize the bird origami and another class to recognize the spooky person origami. Um, OK, back to the slides. Thank you. So we, uh, we released the experiment online. All the inference and training is happening in the browser. And we also released the open source, um, we open sourced the boil boil boilerplate code that uh, went along with the experiment. And what happened next uh, was that we were really kind of taken aback by all the stories of teachers around the world, like this one, who started using Teachable Machine to introduce ML into the classroom. Uh, here's another example of kids learning about smart cities and kind of training the computer to recognize handmade stop signs. This is really amazing. Um, and finally, we heard from another uh, renowned and pioneering researcher, Hal Abelson, who teaches at MIT, uh, that he had been using Teachable Machine to introduce ML to policymakers. And for a lot of them, it was the first time that they had ever trained a model. Uh, so needless to say, we were really happy that although simple in nature, uh, Teachable Machine ended up being a really to good tool for educators um, and people that were new to machine learning. So here's another example. Uh, this one is called MoveMare. And the concept is really simple. You strike a pose in front of a webcam, and you get an image with a matching pose. And again, this is all happening uh, on the web. So here's another example of uh, actually people using it in the form of an installation. People do like really funny moves. Um, and again, this is happening on a phone, but on the phone's browser. And so the story for this one was that in order to make the experiment really accessible, we had to um, you know, take the tech to the web so that we wouldn't require users to have like a complicated tech setup or to use IR cameras or depth sensors, which can be expensive. So PoseNet was born. To our knowledge, it's the first uh, pose estimation model for the web. And uh, it's open source, it runs locally in your browser, and it uses good old RGB webcams. So again, we were really taken aback by uh, all of the creative projects that we saw popping up online. Uh, just to give you a sense, like the one on the left is a musical interface, the one in the middle is a ping pong game that you can use with your head. I really want to play that one. Uh, and the one on the right is a uh, kind of performative motion capture animation. Um, but we also started hearing from people in the accessibility world that they were using PoseNet. So we decided to partner with um, a bunch of groups that work at the intersection of disability and uh, technology, like the NYU Ability Project, and musicians, artists, um, makers in the accessibility world. And out of that collaboration came a set of creative tools that we're calling Creatability. And a lot of them use PoseNet uh, for users who have motor impairments to be able to interface with a computer with their whole bodies instead of through a keyboard and a mouse. So again, I don't have time to demo these, but um, just to give you a sense, the one on the uh, bottom left is a visualization tool made by a musician named Jay Zimmerman, who's deaf. And the one on the top right is an accessible musical instrument made by um, a group called Open Up Music. And we just took their designs and kind of moved it to the web. So again, um, all of the components that uh, made this project are accessible, um, and they've been open sourced. So just to step back for a second, if we were to think about um, what made these projects successful, or at least useful for other people. Uh, we can see that they were all interactive and accessible th through the browser, so it really lowered the barrier of entry for a lot of people. Uh, they all had an open source component, so that people could kind of look under the hood, see what's happening, modify them, play with them. And then finally, they're all free, right? Because 
Uh, the processing is happening locally in the browser with TensorFlow.js, and that gave us privacy so that we didn't have to send images of people's bodies and faces to any servers. So again, all the projects that I went through kind of quickly, they're on the experiments.withgoogle.com site. And even though these were created in-house, uh, we actually feature work by more than 1,700 developers from around the world. So if any of this resonates with you, this is really an open invitation for uh, you to submit your work. And I hope to have showed that uh, you never know who you might inspire or who might take your work and kind of innovate on top of it and use it in really creative ways. Thank you.